Good afternoon again, Mr. Garcia. This is Darno from BMW and Porsche of Ocala. Uh, once again, I want to take another moment to show you the 2017 BMW X5. This one here is a S Drive 35i. Uh, what well, that means that it's the rear wheel drive version of the X5 with the inline six twin power turbo, which is a twin scroll turbo. Produces 300 horsepower, 300 pounds for the torque. Okay, just uh, like before, I'll go over some of the standard equipment as well as the optional equipment that this vehicle has. Okay. As a standard option, you have the LED daytime run running lights from the Corona rings with the bi-xenon headlights, and they're adaptive bi-xenons, so they're auto level as well as swivel up to 15 degrees so that you can see around corners. You do have the LED fog lights up front. Everything as well on the X5 is functional. So you got ventilation on the front of the uh, the bumper, help air tra uh, travel around the car. There's uh, channels underneath the car to help direct air to your brakes. Okay, this car has the premium package added to it. So what that's going to give you comfort access keyless entry so you put your hand here to lock the car and then you can put your hand inside the handle to unlock it and that's going to be on all four doors considering it is an SUV just go around to the back you do have LED tail lights as a standard BMW does a couple of unique things So you have adaptive brake lights in the rear, which are one of the unique things that they do. So what that means is a portion of your light comes on during uh, normal braking, and when you slam on the brakes, it's gonna uh, light up the entire back end for, for safety reasons. That way the person behind you can actually uh, tell the difference between your braking. You do have parking sensors as standard front to rear. This car does have the uh, backup camera added to it. The tailgate on this is is powered you can adjust the height as well on this you would adjust it in the iDrive system which I'll get to once I get around the front the X5 is a little bit larger than the Macan definitely see the size difference in the rear just a little bit you do have a privacy shade it's easy to remove here uh, this is a 40 20 40 split Underneath here, considering the BMW uses run flat tires, you actually get an extra compartment. So you get a little bit more storage here. The tail, the bottom part of the tailgate folds down, and this will actually support up to 550 pounds on it. You do have a 12 volt outlet. Now there's two, because of the comfort access, you have two buttons here. One is to actually just control, uh, lower the hatch. The other one's to lower the hatch and lock the car. around to the back this has the uh, black interior it says uh, 40 20 40 split very easy to fold the seats down in the center console you have extra space here so you can put your cup holders Okay. And to bring this seat down, you would just bring it down using the handle that's up here. Just use the pass-through, so if you needed to you know, put a 2 by 4 or maybe skis, or just a bag right through the center, it's real easy to do. Because of the premium package, this does have four-zone climate control, which means that you have uh, the vent controls in the front and rear of the vehicle, so that your rear passenger can be comfortable as possible two 12 volt outlets back here so your passengers can uh, plug in any media devices that they might have okay. you have a slot for uh, bottles so that you can put them in here in case you had uh, extra drinks that were a little too big for the cup holders 
ventilation right here in the B pillar. Okay, with the premium package, you do have auto dimming mirrors. The X5 does have the uh, power seats with the memory package, uh, with the memory seats as a standard option. You have a control for your tailgate actually right here, which is really convenient. So you can uh, press it to lift it. You can see it comes up, or you can pull and hold it. To, to bring it back down. Okay, going inside the car, everything's very easy to operate. You do have a multifunction steering wheel. Okay, on the left side, you have your cruise control settings. So you have the button to turn on the cruise control on the bottom here, your set button, your resume, and then this toggle. So BMW calls it the dynamic cruise control and the reason for that is because of how, how it operates. So most vehicles, when you start to go uphill, the car loses a little bit of power. This car won't. It'll maintain the speed that you set. It'll apply throttle uh, when, when necessary. Uh, now you can actually, when using the toggle, you can, if you tap it up once, it's gonna go up in increments of one mile per hour. But if you press and hold it, it will go up in speed uh, increments up to five miles per hour. Okay, on the right side of the steering wheel, you have your mode buttons to switch between uh, your media source. You have your volume control. You have a button to answer and hang up the phone. You have your voice command button, which is standard. And then this roller will allow you to cycle through different things. So because I haven't hit anything else, it'll cycle through radio stations. But if a phone was connected and I hit the phone button and cycle through this, it's gonna go through your call history. This is the new and improved iDrive. They've changed the layout on it a little bit. Uh, one of the good things about this new iDrive is touchscreen. So you have all your media in one option. Communication is where you connect your phone, access your contacts, your call history. You could dial a number if you needed to. Your navigation. BMW has a wonderful navigation system. Very easy to operate. Yeah, you have your connected drive, so you can uh, have control of BMW Assist. Uh, once your BMW Assist is set up, you can check the weather, the news, do an online search right here from your iDrive. Go to my vehicle, you have access to all your settings, uh, a lot of the technology you have access to here. So you have your vehicle settings, your iDrive settings, uh, profiles, uh, vehicle status. You'll be able to check your oil, your tire pressure right from this menu, check when your service is due. For vehicles that have the navigation, you get a couple extra things, one of which is the sport display. So you can see your horse, horsepower and torque output while driving. Another thing is once you go to the media option, you have this music collection option that's also added once you have the navigation. So what this is gonna do is allows you to put a CD into the CD player and this will download it to a hard drive that's built into the car. Considering the year of the vehicle, uh, you'll have 20 gigs of space that you can utilize just for, for music. So that's thousands of songs that you can store directly onto your radio and never pop the CD in again. Okay, and then you have your notifications. So any messages uh, that come up will, will be there. Now, we have all the climate control settings right here for you laid out. 
you have your one through eight preset button. Now, the unique thing about this, which most people uh, don't know at first, is that the pre these aren't just for presets on your radio. So I'm gonna swipe across here. And the whole point to this is when you look at the screen, it shows you what's stored on each key, which is really nice. Uh, so what I mean by this isn't for your radio. You could very well use this for radio stations, but this is uh, programmable memory keys. So if you wanted to, uh, as an example, this is very easy. You go to my vehicle, uh, and I was just showing this. So go to sport display. Now I'm going to press and hold number eight. Now it's stored to no number eight. So no matter what screen I'm in, if I press number eight, that goes directly to the screen that's stored on that key. So this can be utilized for phone numbers. It can be utilized for uh, directions in your navigation, your radio. Uh, you can use it for pretty much anything you want as a quick access. Going down, you have your eight speed automatic transmission. Real easy to operate. Right now it's in the park position. You push it forward once, neutral, again, reverse, and it pops back into the center. Uh, you want to put it into drive. Now the assumption is you're not going to drive in reverse, so if you're in reverse, all you have to do is pull it down and it goes into drive, and you press the P here to put it in park. But once you're in park, you have to press and hold the button here and pull it down. Then you push it over to the left. You have a sport mode, and it tells you that you're in the sport drive. And when it says S1, now if you were to move the shifter, then it goes into the manual mode. So now it's showing M and then the gear that you're in. And you can control it right from the, the shifter. And then you press P, and right from there it'll go right back to the position it's supposed to be in. On the left side of the shifter, you have your um, dynamic traction control button. Underneath that, you have your sport and the comfort button. So the whole point to this is to change the driving dynamics. So that's actually called the driving dynamic control. So right now the car is in comfort, but I press the down arrow. Now it's going to go to the Eco Pro setting. This is going to change the throttle response as well as the shift patterns to help you be more uh, efficient. And the, the miles per gallon that's rated on this car is based on driving this car in comfort. So you can get a little bit of additional miles per gallon by uh, utilizing the Eco Pro. You go up, you go back into comfort, go up again, and then you're into the sport mode. Now again, this is going to change the throttle response as well as the shift patterns, but for more performance settings. So you can leave the car and drive and let the car do everything, or you can put it in sport drive or the manual mode like I just showed. This is the iDrive controller, so this is how you would navigate through the system here. You have your quick access buttons, so you can find everything very easily. Here's your back and your option button. And then what's nice, what they've done with this is the top of this is a touchpad. So if we were to go to the map and go to guidance, enter new destination, and then enter address. Now if we go to city, let's say city. Now you can actually scribble on here and it'll recognize what you're writing. And again, you can still utilize the voice commands, which again are standard, uh, to operate the navigation. You can use the voice commands to navigate through most of the system. Hey, you have your uh, electronic parking brake here, and then your auto hold function. The auto hold function only works when your seatbelt's connected. Hey, uh, what this is going to do is once you come to a complete stop, you release the brake, and the car is going to engage the parking brake so that you don't move, all you do is hit the accelerator and then you'll, you'll be on your way. And it gives you a good, it's a way to, to relax your legs. You do have an automatic start and stop feature with this vehicle as well. So once you, the requirements are met between battery voltage and, um, and the car being a certain temperature, the car will shut off to conserve fuel and then reactivate once you release the brake or turn the steering wheel. You have a panoramic roof. Well, it's just uh, some of the wonderful things about the X5. Yeah, step out and take another good look at it.
again, Mr. Garcia. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and look forward to speaking with you. Thank you.